Hello there, viewers. All right, I'm in Isaiah chapter 53. Going to read about the substitutionary death of the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ here. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was, a, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her sharers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he hath, he had done no violence, neither was there any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. And that word satisfied means propitiation. So, um, I like to turn no fast. Let's just, I will come right back to this passage here. I want to turn to the epistle to the Romans here. Right here it is. Chapter 3 here in Romans, the epistle to the Romans, starting at verse 21, it says, But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation, keep that word in mind, propitiation, through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. So, propitiation means to make satisfaction for. So, we go back to, turn back to Isaiah here, or Isaiah, I believe that's the correct pronunciation, actually, Isaiah, the prophet. It says here, He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. So, remember that word propitiation in the epistle to the Romans. That means to um, make satisfaction for it. So Jesus Christ, with his death on the cross, made satisfaction for our sins with his blood. The blood that was shed once for all. Let me read verse 11 again. It says, He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By, the knowledge, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, 
and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So this Isaiah 53 is talking about the substitutionary death of the Messiah for sinners, folks. See, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, came into this world to die for our sins, to bring in that everlasting righteousness that Daniel um, spake of. If I turn to Daniel, the prophet Daniel, chapter 9 here. Chapter 9 here, the prophet Daniel says here, I'm going to start at um, verse 21 here. Yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, this is Daniel speaking here, even the man Gabriel, who I, who, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O oh, Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter, and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, Notice that to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring an everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks. And three score in two weeks. The street shall be built again, and the wall, even in troublous times. And after three score in two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. So then it goes on it's about the prophecy about the um, prince that will come, the Antichrist will. It's it has like a dual prophecy there. But it's all about the Messiah. In verse twenty four says. Uh, it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Of course, he's talking about the Jewish people, Daniel's people. And upon thy holy city, talk about the city of Jerusalem. To finish the transgression, and to make an end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness. See, Jesus did that, folks, when he died on the cross. When he offered up that perfect, once-for-all sacrifice upon the cross... That brought in that everlasting righteousness that uh, made an end of sins and made reconciliation for iniquity. See, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that reconciles sinners to God when they believe. So when a person believes, their, their, their faith is counted for righteousness. They are imputed with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. When they believe on him, folks, when they place their trust in Jesus Christ, so, maybe we could just turn real fast to the New Testament here. Um, the Epistle to the Hebrews is a very good, um, talks about the, um, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ here. Okay, so... I'm going to, this is chapter 9 here. I'm going to start at verse 11. This is Hebrews, the epistle to the Hebrews. But Christ being come in high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats, and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctify it to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, notice it's the blood of Christ, 
who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. Talk about on the day of atonement. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. So we could praise the Lord um, that Christ fulfilled the righteousness of the law. He he fulfilled the law. He he. He was the perfect sacrifice for his sins, folks. And that's why Jesus Christ came into this world. That's why God the Father sent his eternal son, Jesus Christ, into this world to, to, to bear our sins, to take our sins upon himself, to offer up that perfect sacrifice so we could have the forgiveness of sins, so we could be reconciled to a just and holy God, so we could have eternal salvation to all who would believe on him, on the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, folks, so that's about it here. Thank you for watching again. Um, more videos to come. So I will see you. A big shout out to the beautiful wife, Eve Mina. All right. Bye-bye.